Hey, Nicky. Yes, Toto? What's the difference between Nicole Scherzinger and me? I don't know. What's the difference between Nicole Scherzinger and you, Toto? These days, I only get to pull off Lewis Hamilton. I don't understand. Mistakes were made at every level of that joke, and we will learn from those mistakes going forward. Now that's priceless. Hello, welcome to Gareth Jones on Speed. He's Richard. Hello. He's Zog. Hello. I'm Gareth, with uh, unnecessary emphasis on all the consonants, but there again, I am Welsh. Sorry about that. Do you know what? If you're a car nut like me, and these two terrible men stood next to me, you can get a thrill simply from walking down the road some days where a car could come past, and you think, oh, I'm enjoying that. Enjoying that. Do you know what I enjoyed the other day? Triumph Herald convertible. Oh, yeah. There's joy in that. Mundane little thing. I saw it. Brought me great joy. And this ties in with an idea that Richard's had for a chat on the programme about cars who've grown into their own skin. Is that the right way of putting it? Cars that have got better looking with age. Like an ugly teenager becoming a gorgeous adult. Yeah, I suppose so. Awkward teenager, I should yeah, say. Yeah, I suppose there is that thing where often they'll show you a picture of some famous actor or actress who is legendarily good-looking and they'll show a picture of them as a teenager and they'll be very gawky. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, And there's yeah. always a thing, oh, yes, you know, the best-looking people are always very awkward teenagers and then they'll have become Shelley's Theron or something. Hmm. And maybe there's a car equivalent. I might be overthinking it. Basically, it's just cars that I personally wasn't necessarily sure of and that these days they wow you with their good looks in some way or other. And is it in this sense for this car to have subtly evolved in some way like the second generation got a better grill that improved it that sort of thing or is it just the same car would you say that now looks better no I think it's the same car I think it's just that somehow either your taste has changed or the car has fallen into line with some modern definition of beauty when you said cars that got better with age the way I interpreted it a design that over the years has come to look more attractive in our eyes. It's cheating if they've made it look better over the years. Yeah. That's just making a a bad-looking car look better. Yeah, Yeah, okay. It has to be the same car. The one that came to mind for me immediately was... Jaguar XJS. Oh, which, that you was know, one of mine as well. <laughs> and, that, and that's why I wanted to get that in first, because I knew I would not be the only person to think of that. And I'm sorry, but it's the obvious example. You know, It's the one that, when it came out, just looked wrong. You know, It looked awkward. But over the years, it, it's come to seem more stately, more beautiful, more elegant. Oh, it was just ahead of its time, in a way. Yes. And probably just because it was a little bit unusual. And as apart from the other, you know, familiarity is very kind to yes, slightly unusual-looking cars. That's the truth. But then you don't see, particularly a Series 1 XGS, a very early one, very early with the black panel between the back lights. Yes. Which marks oh, them out yeah. as a very, very early one. Yes. I think they just look staggeringly oh, good. That's a very good point about the design being ahead of its time. A lot of these cars that, over the years, come to look better, that we revise our opinions of, yeah, it, it's because the designers were looking far enough ahead. And I guess you always have to do this to some extent in a lot of fields of industrial design. They were just looking that little bit further ahead. They were a bit further ahead of the curve. Mm. You know, they were maybe a bit too brave for the time, but they got it right. So mm. years down the line, it worked it pays off. Better. What year did the XJS come out? Was it 78? 75. So I remember reading a car magazine in school and seeing the first pictures of the XJS. I was 14 then. And hating those flying buttresses. Not flying buttresses. Sorry, those buttresses. buttresses. Sorry, those buttresses. I don't get why they're called flying buttresses. They have to be air in between What's up on your ecclesiastical architecture, The Mirac. Come on. (laughs) The Mirac. Yes. Flying buttresses. It did. Yes, yes, yes. My mistake, but not the XS. I remember hating those buttresses and thinking, oh, do you know what this car looks like? It looks like a Citroen Diane. I remember thinking that as a Mm. kid, some distorted Citroen Diane. (laughs) Put the two back together, have a look at the headlamps, have a look at the other stuff going on the scoop of the bonnet and I remember really not liking it but of course now I look at XJS and I think God, it's a wonderful thing isn't it did you know that the XJS would have been in a car magazine years before it was announced because there's a famous story or infamous story But a journalist and a photographer from I think car magazine were left alone in the Jag factory at Browns Lane uh huh hmm they were visiting to interview somebody but they were just left alone to wander about and they just wandered into a room full of cars under dust sheets were they silver have they silver have I seen that picture no no they were never this is the thing because here's the story 
they started looking under the dust sheets, you know, and there's mm. sort of just cars, normal Jags into there, but they lifted back one of them, and the photographer went, what is this? And the journalist said, oh, I don't know, but don't worry about it, Jag would never make something that awful. <laughs> and they never took pictures oh, of it. They well, could have had yeah. the scoop of the decade, and they ignored it because they couldn't believe that something like that would be signed off. And lo, yeah. a few years later, it went on sale. It went on sale, and brilliantly, it went on sale, and it absolutely tanked at first, for a number of reasons, one of which was it's standard car industry practice. You start building cars in small batches of colour, so you'll start building silver ones and you'll start building white ones and blue ones, and then you gradually build up over the course of every few days you'll introduce a new colour, just to try and debug the paint shop, make sure there's no mm. flaws in the system there. And what happened with the XJS is they started building up the colours. They got to red, white, and yellow, I think, and yeah. then oh, that's yellow. it. And then they just couldn't build them in any other colour. And this went on for months, even, I think, a year well, you can only have it in three colours. So you book in the brochure and go, well, I'd like a brown one or I'd like a grey one. Sorry, Mike. No, you can't brown. do that, Mike. No, yeah. no. Brown's lying, but yeah. not brown in colour. It was like the Monty Python cheese oh. shop of yeah. XJS yeah. colours. Hello, I'd like to buy an XJS. Yeah, yeah. Well, good old days set. of the British uh, and, uh, Yeah, so that, that's the thing. The car was almost nixed by it. So the other thing about XJS is, you know, one of the reasons when it became more popular was because they put the wood and leather into the interior that mm -hmm. they realised that Jaguar buyers of the time, particularly in the US, wanted. Mm. But when it was new, there was no wood in the interior of that car it was silver uh, sort of metal effect and, yeah. and black but you look at it now and you go how modern uh -huh. it was mm, ahead of its yeah. time again but then they, they, unfortunately mm. Jaguar customers didn't want yeah. you can't get too far ahead of your customers unfortunately yeah. so both of your first nominations for cars which have grown into themselves are Jags yeah no, the same Jag my first nomination is a Ford I have a funny relationship with Ford. You know, I love the Ford Motor Company more than any other. As much mm. as I love Lancia cars, I love the Ford Motor Company. The way it operates has always fascinated me. My dad used to drive Ford, so I know more about it, so I care more about it. And I think the problem with a lot of Fords when they come out, I have really high expectations. Oh, the new car's coming out. It's going to be really exciting. And when I first see it, oh, I'm slightly disappointed. And then it grows on me. And I think that's what happens. When the Ford car first came out... I remember seeing one on this very road parked down the bottom there and a car was egged by someone in Stoke Newington who threw an egg at it as some sort of protest. Against the shape? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. Because I always thought it looks like an egg with a diagonal slice just taken off the back. I thought it was a funny looking thing. Yeah, I but I look it. at Ford cars, the original Ford car on the street now, especially the sport car, mm. and it looks tremendous chic in the way that an original Mini Cooper does I think the car has grown into its skin would you disagree? yeah I think it looks dated now really? I think familiarity has killed that I really like the cat when it came out and I like the cleverness of it and that sharp line between the bonnet and the front wing yes. which wasn't just there as a styling thing although obviously it was all about this kind of edgy new edge design they yeah. called it but it also it made it easier for the bonnet to fit there was only one way that bonnet went in. Uh -huh. And because there was mm. a sharp yeah. ridge, yeah. it didn't matter if the panel fit was a little bit off, it would yeah. look fine. Whereas if you've got it yeah. as a smooth surface, you'll spot wonky panel gaps. And the same with the tailgate. The tailgate, if you look at it, the sort of ring of bodywork around it. So the tailgate just go yeah. into the hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't get it wrong. Yeah. If you've got a clamshell tailgate and it's a bit off, it looks bloody awful. The cleverness in the design was actually making it simple and cheap to make. And yeah. that's a beautiful little trick where you can pull it off. And yeah. Do yeah. Do yeah. Thing. They made it do look like a design feature. Good, yeah. Yeah. And that also you know, gets around a practical problem, mm. makes the thing easier. Yeah, yeah. yeah, beautiful. So oh. I thought it was great at the time and I loved it and I actually bought one. But now I think it looks a little bit sort of passe. Which is no criticism because it came out in the 14th century, 18 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, sorry, yeah, it's 1800. All right. I mean, it has become quite dated now. It's right. There's something about the Mark One Focus. Now, there's a funny one. I was behind one of those the other day in traffic. I don't think that's dated necessarily, but it just looks ordinary. Yeah. And you remember when it came out? Yeah, it looked like it, it was like it was crazy. Like a smack in the mouth. It yeah. was, it was yeah. extraordinarily yeah. sort of crazy. Mind. When I first saw one on the road, I thought that's a very odd Ponto. It's tall. It's long. Oh no, it's a Focus. Wow, it's a Ford. They shock you, don't they? But listen, we've each got one more suggestion of cars let's do it after this thought oh no professori giugiaro look this piece of toast is burnt in the top and if we turn it over yes the toast appears consistently burnt on the bottom also yes yes you're right what bigger, a line or a type? Oh no, look! Someone has made the television all fuzzy on Channel 1. I wonder if I flip the station, if this is the case for Channel 2 as well. Channel 2 also appears to be fuzzy. 
Yes, well observed, professori. Oh my goodness! Look at this newspaper story! Both teams caught cheating in a football match in Rome. It says the crowd booed one team, and then if you read this part here... Yes, they booed the opposing team too. Just do the catchphrase. Step Petrol, we Gareth Jones on speed! On Gareth Jones on speed today, we're talking about cars which have grown to look better with familiarity. I've grown accustomed to your grill. Perhaps if it was a soul, that would be it, wouldn't it? I've grown accustomed to your shot lines. I think that sums it up. I've grown accustomed to your swage. To your lines. To your lines, yes. Well, speaking of swage, I was going to also mention the Triumph TR7. Oh, yes. Another yeah. mid-70s yeah, yeah, car. Oh, my God. Like the XJS. Oh, my yeah, God. They've yeah, done yeah. the other side, yeah. And particularly that funny drooping swage line mm-hmm. down the side, which was one of the things that made that car so alarming to look at for mm-hmm. people when it came out, including, of course, Giorgetto Gigiaro, who Famously? Uh, famously. Even he can't remember if he said it now, but if I were him, I'd just say, yeah, did. Because yeah, it's been, yeah, yeah. you know, it was quite good as a quote. And he also but, said that the J- XJ6 was probably the most beautiful car ever. Yeah, the series oh, okay. two, I think he meant. Mm. Yeah, fair play. But that line down the side of a TR7, you yeah. look mm. around. It's, it's like loads of cars have got that now. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Harris Vauxhalls, but mm. oh, Vauxhall, yeah. all they're doing yeah. with their thing, and Mercs, those sort of funny, slightly converging creases up the side. And it's just, yeah. There's a lot of crease going on. Ooh. A lot of things with creases on, but specifically, sort of some Seats and. Some Chevrolets and things have that exact TR7 line, and it's perfectly acceptable. The poor old TR7 got a lot of flack for it. And if you actually look at TR7 convertible, when you get rid of that funny squared-off roof, which is still a bit odd, but when you get rid of that, I think it's quite a pretty little car. Mm. You're quite right that the convertible is more elegant, whereas the XGS really did kind of grow into its looks, or Mm. we did finally realise that actually, yeah, that is a well-proportioned, good-looking car. With the TR7, there's just a little bit of residual... Uh, they haven't quite got it right for the coupe version. Mm. Yeah, take the roof away, and yeah, it's a beautiful little car. Here's the thing, though. Actually, the XJS, I think it's probably its one failing, is that the proportions are not actually bob-on. The back wheels are a little bit I... too far forward, because it used the wheelbase of the XJC rather than the full house XJ6, and it's a little bit shorter... But somehow, it's almost as if they have got that message until it was too late. Yeah. The back I, wheel's I, just a little bit too far forward. Yeah. If you look at yeah, it, I think I mean, if you're a real purist about proportions, you'd say it's not. I will accept your objection, and I'm going to substitute the word lines for yes. proportions. Oh, that's the thing, but you know, there is no beauty that hath not the it strangest about its proportion. Isn't it, that the quote from Francis Bacon? Is close it? enough. It, yeah. the, the, there was an age where overhangs... Oh my God, he did it to the other side. He said that as well. <laughs> there was an age where overhangs... It was like collars were wider in the 70s. Trousers were wider the in the 70s. Big ruffled ones. Oh, yeah, sorry. No, the, not the 1670s. 1970s, yeah, yeah. sorry, yes. <laughs> the, the, My 70s. And, you know, overhangs... You're in your 70s. I feel like it some days. For instance, I saw a car... Oh, did you hear about this $35 million auction recently? Some Texan royal family sold loads of cars, but one car of all the cars that they were selling made me have a nice sit down and that had incredible overhangs. It was a 1953 concept, an Italian carrozziera called Boano, who created something called the Lincoln Indianapolis. Do you know this car? Oh, I, I, I think I've, it's ringing a bell. I think, I think I've seen a picture of it. Yeah, For it's, further it's, reading, I recommend immediately... In fact, now, if you're listening to this programme, get a picture of the Lincoln Indianapolis. It is a car I'd never seen before. It's the most wonderful thing you can imagine. Of its age, long overhangs, but beautiful. Sorry, but that car started off looking good, right? Mm. <laughs> you know, we're talking now about cars which never used to look good, but look good now. What's your second nomination? Having thought of the obvious one, I was having a hard time thinking of a really good second example. And I'm not sure if this is good or not, because I don't think its looks were regarded as particularly bad at the time. But the Citroën Traction Avant, the old Light 15, it just seems like over the years that has become, and this is partly familiarity, I think, and nostalgia then comes into it, a more and more beautiful and fabulous looking thing. And I suspect that originally it was just probably regarded as rather average looking. I think the proportions vehicle. would have been a bit weird because the front wheels are very far forward. It has an extremely long wheelbase, doesn't it? I think it, it, it does. If you look at yeah, it alongside yeah. other cars from its time, it's definitely slightly different looking. Not yeah. madly so, but... And it wasn't actually the first front wheel drive car, but it was the first really successful one anyway. You, but that, you that, love that, that, that car it, so it, much. Yeah, I do, I do. And, you know, I, I think it's a really fabulous looking thing. So, I, 
yeah, that's my second nomination. Um, Richard, your second nomination? Well, mine was a TR7, but I'm going to open up a little box called the Contemporary Section, because this is what originally reminded me of this idea. There's two cars around that I suddenly thought, they've been around for a while, they're current production cars, but to my mind, they've just got better looking. One is the Land Rover Discovery, because that's coming to the end of its life now. Yeah. And I still think that's a fantastically handsome, handsome. car. Yeah, yeah. It's quite sort of simple design. And it's not necessarily sort of following fashion. It's just a big brick of a thing. But there's yeah. just something incredibly noble about it. And when they do the replacement, they'll give it the sort of swoopy aero front like a modern Range Rover. And I just think it won't be the same. I quite like yeah. the fact it's so anti-fashion because it's just incredibly sort of squared bluff. off and bluff. I but also agree. another one, the Audi A5 Coupe. I hated that when it came out. Really? And I thought it ruined all of that very simple, crisp, geometric stuff that Audi did because it's got that funny line down the side that goes up over the wheel arches a little bit and looks like it's been nicked off a Bentley. I was about to say exactly that. It's like a smaller Bentley Continental. Like and also I the think. front lights sort of didn't seem to wrap round enough and so it looked like it had been smacked in the mouth a bit, you know, sort of like a pug yes. dog, yeah. sort of flat face. Yeah. And I thought the back was bland. And I remember seeing an emotion and just going, well, pfft, oh, hell, they really phoned that one in, sort of nicked some ideas and then phoned the rest in. That's just rubbish. And now I see them around and I'm not a huge fan of sort of Audis per se for various reasons, but they do do good crisp design but I think the A5 Coupe is one hell of a nice looking car do you know I think one of the reasons that helps that car look good is you don't see them that often in the wild there aren't no, that you see them many. all the time that's really? the thing yeah, yeah really? I'm walking the dog I see them all the time now because that's the thing every time I see one I go ooh yes I like that yeah, yeah, yeah I, I like thought that. Oh, they're, 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 they're all hanging around yeah. Hampstead Heath where you're walking uh, your dog rather than being yeah, out yeah. on the streets of London sometimes I don't even take the dog because it just gets in the way uh, <laughs> oh yeah. what was go I go for a walk on Hampstead Heath uh, sir on your own sir and yeah unlike and I've started seeing a lot of these around as well the BMW 4 series as it's now called yes. I almost said 3 series yeah, there's one down there yeah. that rear three quarter that's a nice looking car Mm. That's, a, easy, that's a really yeah. nice looking car. I don't know, there's something very wide and low about it from the rear three quarter. But that's not in question. I think that's always been a good looking car. But the A5 just kind of you that's one that's come around somehow. It's sort of the, mellowed. The trick will be to think of the car or the cars that you can buy now that look rubbish mm. that are going to look great in 20 years' time. Oh. Ooh, let's hold that that's thought true. for another yeah, 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 yeah. Another yeah. chat. Yeah. 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 Think about yeah, we'll come back to that. My second nomination for cars which I think have grown into their own skin or grown to look better with age again is a Ford and I think it, again it's this thing that I have hopes and dreams for Fords when they come out because I care that they get it right when they come out I'm disappointed and then over the years I learn to live with it and go oh they didn't do too bad but I think there's evidence that this car looks better now than it did when it first came out in the fact that it's just been replaced with another version which has a very similar back to the old one. I'm talking about the Ford Mondeo. Do you remember when the Mondeo came out? We discussed it on Gareth Jones on Speed. And I said, yeah, great front end, terrible back end, unless it's the estate. And the mm. estate was fantastic. And I saw the estate the other day, and I stopped, and I took a picture of it. It looked so fantastically stalwart and balanced and brilliant. And mm. the saloon, though, the hatch... I've grown to love as well. It doesn't bother me in the way when it first came out. And if you look at the new Mondeo, which we'll discuss in a moment, Richard, I'd say that the rear end of the new Mondeo shows parentage to the old one. So they had courage in that rear design to carry it over to the new one. Would you agree? Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, it's sort of grown into itself a bit. I don't know, it's still the old shape one is too heavy around the back end. There's too much metal work compared to the it's wheels. Old. It's a bit, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, really, but familiarity the, the new one you... looks you a lot it. better than the old one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. To, to me, there's really? A, there's a, yeah. I like the front yeah, end yeah, of the I, old one better, I think. Mm. Do you know what's a nice I, looking Mondeo? The second one. Yeah. You know the one that... Yeah. The, the one that had contour inspiration, the Series 2 Monday. No, no, it? that was sort of like the Mark One and a half, yeah. wasn't it, with the big headlights and the oval grille, and they went a bit mad. The one after that, yeah. there was a bit sort of, well, actually a bit Volkswagen-ish. There was sort of all very geometric and straight lines and everything yeah. lined up nicely, and it was all quite neat. But that's the thing, I think it was very neat, and you almost you just don't notice them because they're everywhere, or they were. The last but if you, if you have a good stare at it, you go... Mm, yeah, nice. And also, a fabulous car to drive. Mondeo was sort of yes. got progressively less good to drive. Mm. We'll come on to that in a minute. But yes. We yeah. Will. yeah, it was the looks of the original one that I just wasn't so taken by. It wasn't quite right. But if you want to know about the new Mondeo, hang on. Everyone turning off their MP3 players. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of Sanyong, UK. It's just me, Bob. It's always just me. Yes, of course. My colleague called Neil of Sanyang, UK. I think I have come up with a way to sell more cars in Britain. Give them away? No, Neil. 
Insurance fraud? No, Neil. It's not make them look nice? No. I asked about that, but the head office refused. Oh. So instead, we redesigned our showrooms. Here, I have a picture of an existing showroom. You see, it just says San Young above the door. And here's a showroom after my proposed redesign. Ta-da! The San Young Future Classics Centre. My God, that's brilliant! And what's that slogan on the window? They won't look crap forever. I've got to admit, this is genius! I know. Let's celebrate by taking all the guys and girls of the office to the pub. It's just you and me, Bob. Oh, yeah. As if you haven't worked this out already, Richard's been getting, I hate when people say this, up close and personal. It's such a horrible cliche. Hate it. It's terrible, isn't it? It's like when people go, I've been taking a sideways glance. No! What does that mean? I said that once. Peripheral vision. I don't understand. Sideways glance. (laughs) And the other one is, sit back. Relax. No! <laughs> that, that means we don't know how to introduce sorry, this film. If, you, <laughs> if you're going to get onto annoying phrases, uh, we've been on a journey. Oh, oh, yeah. Let's take a look back at your journey. No, yeah. As so, if they've been on a train no, from Carlisle. Just, <laughs> please just cut my head off sake, and yeah. get me out of here. <laughs> Zog, sit back, relax, as we get up close and personal and take a I sideways think, glance <laughs> at your, your journey. journey. You might as well get the service yes. revolver out now. Good I Lord. talking about journeys from Carlisle on a train. I, I spent uh, six hours on a train with Wendy and Lisa. Oh, right. Did you? Wendy and Lisa of, of Prince fame. Yeah. Oh, oh, my when, Lord. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wendy yeah. Mel. Vowen yeah. and right. Lisa... Lisa Rogers. Lisa Rogers, yeah. that's Was it? Yeah. Is it not Rogers? No, Lisa... Mel- um, I forgot no, there's Wendy Melvowen. And um, Lisa uh, Rogers is the actress. Yes, she is. Yeah, the Welsh one. <laughs> she won uh, Bake Off. She used to live on my street. Man, okay, this is going to kill anyway, me. Anyway, Wendy and Lisa... We'll it, come back to that. Yeah, one. we will. Uh, <laughs> no <interesting laughs> Wendy Craig cars. and Lisa <laughs> Iamson off Radio 1 in the 90s. <laughs> Whatever happened to her? <laughs> and neither of them have any experience with the Mondeo like Richard has. You're going out on a limb link? here, Gareth, I'm because you cannot... Can yeah. you honestly say that all current and former musicians related to Prince have never been in a Mondeo? No, they only drive little red Corvettes. I'm pretty sure no, there's been yeah. so many... Many people have been in Prince's backing band in its various yeah. incarnations. Law of averages. I would be prepared to bet a large amount of money that at least one of them yeah, had the some Thunderbird point once. Yeah. Two been in the Thunderbird, I, seem to I thought that Prince has got a Toyota Carina E. I mean, it's getting a bit leggy now, but he just can't bear to get rid of it. Why is that? Prince right? does a bit of minicabbing on the side. Uh, Prince. I'm not leading towards a pun. I'm, I'm, guess, I'm, 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 towards oh. a pun. I'm honestly not leading towards a pun. I was waiting for a killer punchline there. No, is there it, isn't one. Prince has a Carina E. has a Carina I'm stating this as a fact that isn't true. He had she, know, Sheila E as his percussionist, did, so Karina oh, did, E makes he? sense, yeah. yeah How's the Mondeo, Richard? I've completely forgotten that. <laughs> so long ago. <laughs> I'm still slightly annoyed thinking about those it's, expressions that don't make any sense. Sit back, we, relax. We, That's we, just so annoying, it, isn't it? I haven't realised how annoying it is. Move, it move, it move on. It Step up. away from the clichés. <laughs> so, without using any clichés, <laughs> well, did it hand like it. it was on rails? Oh, my Lord, yes. The controls all felt easily to have. Did, did they? Yeah, it's did. a Ford. Yeah. Actually, I want you to do this entire thing in clichés. Oh, God. Is it? Is, there, is it possible? Uh, no. I well, it, I suppose it would be. Yes. It'd be kind of annoying. Did the it, interior of the car evoke a drawing room? Uh, oh, well, you know, uh, Gareth, lounge? it certainly is a business-like office for, <laughs> for the keen driver. I hate that. That one oh, yeah, really yeah, yeah, winds yeah, yeah, me yeah. up. It's uh, very, uh, very Alan Partridge. Yeah, it? it is very Alan Partridge indeed. But in a bad way. Yeah. Uh, well, well, because that's the thing. Like, unless, as it turns out, you go to put something in the glove box and there's a photocopier in there. It's not an office. It's <laughs> the interior of a car. And whilst it was a capable drive, what do we say about power usually? People say things like there was ample power. Tidal wave of torque is always a good it. one. Eager uh, response to the throttle have. pedal. Power. Was there an eager response to the throttle uh, pedal of the Monday? It's all right. But it's a petrol. Oh. The, Which one? We see the pendulum swinging back towards not the petrol. Eco yeah, yeah, not yeah. the three-cylinder. No, oh. it's four-cylinder. Petrol cheaper than diesel now. Yeah, that's the thing. It's just nicer. It's just nicer. You forget how nice petrol engines are compared yeah, to diesel. Okay. You've got a rev range, and, also, and they're quiet. Petrol yeah. smells nicer than diesel. Yes, it does, and it doesn't get on your hands and make Tastes them all better. Gooey and tacky. As your well. site's not called Sniff Diesel, is it? No, it's not. No, it no. Is. No. Or Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel. <laughs>
Oh, <laughs> and Vin Diesel is one of the best things about Sniff Diesel. Sniff Vin no Diesel. Is it. that his real name? It is his real name. No, is it? No, no, his is real that... name is Vincent Pump Deuce. Vincent Diesel. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Vincent, Vincent Diesel. Pump Deuce. I don't know his real name. I don't know his real name. Is it? I don't know. Oh, I don't we know. must invite the Diesels over for dinner. <laughs> They should, they should give him a but Lord, is, a Lord but thing, Diesel. You know, you, you know, you sometimes think, oh, Diesel. Lady and Sir Vincent Diesel. Who would name themselves after an engine? But the engine is named after Mr. or Dr. Oh, yes, or no, it's a real, yes. You know, he he what about, fell off a cross-channel ferry, didn't he? What about he, yeah? Jonathan yeah. Miller? I think so. I Steve think. Miller from the Steve Miller Band. Named after the Miller Cycle. Uh, Oh, I see. No, I think. Now, hang on. Is it? Wait a minute. Is it Rudolf Diesel or was it? It was Rudolf Diesel. Felix yeah. Vankel, who fell off the Cross Channel ferry? I think it was Rudolf Diesel. Ah. Probably left an awful slick on the water, but, but they, they still couldn't find him. <laughs> so there was no, there was no need to make that joke because I think it's true. I, I think it's I, I, somebody who invented a kind of engine definitely fell off a ferry. Okay. At this point in the proceedings, Gareth realised that Richard might be evading talking about the Mondeo. This could be for a number of reasons. I propose that a it wasn't as interesting as he'd hoped. B it was a disappointment. Or C he was really struggling to find any cliches about it. The truth, Richard. It's all three. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's all right. I yeah, mean, does yeah. anyone care? Honestly, I do. But, but, well, but, apart but, from you, but are you going to go and buy a Mondeo? No. Exactly. <laughs> but you know what you're going to get. You know it's going to do the job, and you know it's going to do it really very well. But it's not going to be yes, spectacular. It's yeah, not going to surprise yeah. you. But this is the thing. The Mondeo used to surprise and delight <laughs> very <laughs> good. keen drivers <laughs> because they were unexpectedly brilliant the yeah, first one yeah. was a terrific car to drive I mean, that's the thing it was well, sort of that point see. at which Ford suddenly went well, you know what after that awful Escort of 1990 oh. we've got to up our game here yeah. and make cars that are really good to drive and they went completely the other extreme made the best drivers cars Richard Perry Jones uh, well yeah him and his cohorts made this incredibly great nice to drive cars, yeah. that was the thing it didn't do it at the expense of just being a brilliant functional medium sized family car but you sort of got the good bits for free and then the second one was like sort of that with a bit more polish and it was a bit more grown up and then the third one the one that's just been replaced mm, sort of yeah it was still there's just a little glimmer there and it feels like with this one that glimmer is pretty much gone it's not a bad car to drive but it's not got that sort of vim and zing mm -hmm. and thing. i'm just listing floor cleaner now but you know what i mean it's just, there was a sort of spark is, to it which is kind of appropriate in that the looks of it the aesthetics mm. are a step up i think it's a, but you notice it's how a big it is car. you see how it big it is i think that's me part of it it's the sheer size 20 of it. minutes to walk mm. from the back end to the front yeah, end. it's got to be longer right. than that's the old bus isn't service it? i don't know i keep meaning to look this up but i think it must be, I reckon. The it's length a of big that boot. Car. Hmm. That was what, three yeah. and a half foot? The boot is deck? extraordinary. Yeah. I mean, to the point where two yeah. things happen. First of all, my little boy's push chair is quite a big old thing. And unless it's a, an estate car, generally you sort of have to dismantle it, take the seat bits off the chassis, and sometimes even pop the wheels off to get it into the boot of a normal car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That Mondeo practically didn't have to fold it down. You just sort of slung it in and it rolled to a stop towards mm -hmm. the back. It was incredible. And then I went to buy some floor tiles, and the person who was helping me to wheeled them out of the shop on a trolley and help me load them in. Very helpful lady from Tops Tiles. And she Thank went, oh, that's a big boot. <laughs> and it was like, wow, hmm. she must see a lot of boots. <laughs> she's, found, she's, she's found the need to comment on the size of the new Mondeo's boots. You know yeah. what it is, don't you? Yeah. She, we're probably related to being Tops Tiles. Yeah, like Tops Tiles. Yeah, she's, yeah. A, she's a, it's a Well, I, I, I commend you on this particular employee because she was really helpful. Well, she knows uh, her boots, yeah. And, and she also, yeah, she comments on the boots. Also, my wife said this, she just went, Mondeo, who wants a Mondeo? It's such a drab-sounding oh. name. And then she went, we don't have this car in America because she's American. And I went, yes, she do, actually. It's come from America. Your people designed this car. Yeah. And she went, no, they wouldn't. They yes, didn't design they this because did. we'd have put a big spoiler on the back and lots of chrome on the front. And I was like, well, we, we made you design it. Actually, but it's called the Ford Fusion over there. And she went, oh, that's a much better name. And I was about to explain to her why it couldn't be called that here because that's a dismal, tall fiesta. But <laughs> I don't want her to leave me, so I shut up. Um, <laughs> but she's got I a think point. Right I think the world's moved on. Do you remember when Tony Blaze talked about Mondeo, Mondeo Man when he was trying to get elected? Yeah. And it was seen yeah. not as a criticism, but just a sort of expression of normality. Yeah. Normality now would be three series man or A4 yeah, that's man. That's right, yeah. And mm. if Jaggy would get their way, XE man. Everyone wants a saloon car of that size 
with what's perceived as a posh badge on it. Nobody wants a Mondeo. Mondeo sounds dismal. Which is why there's going to be this Vignali, which I think will fail for Ford as yeah, well. Yeah, because you still don't want one of those. It's, just, uh, it's still a Mondeo. It's yeah. a problem. But I have high hopes for the S Max of the Galaxy, which will run on the same platform, and I'm sure will be commodious. Because I think they'll be fine. I think they'll sell well, because that's the thing that they sort of yeah. occupy this little area where no one else is at the moment. And I know BMW are trying it with those active, they call that active prostitutes the, the, or something. The active tourer. Yeah, is it, you know, it. What the hell names that? Who knows? I know. Uh, is it worse than Mondeo joining us now? next week to find out yeah <laughs> we gotta go but before we go a quick word about something that's happening for this program and for you guys i think in september that's all we're going to say at the moment it's a venue in london where we're going to celebrate 10 years of gareth jones on speed by having a bit of a party and inviting you guys to come and join us as we record a program are we going to do live sketches boys are we actually going to do live sketches i think we haven't quite decided exactly no, what we're going to do yet, this or if, if, yeah. yeah we haven't entirely thought this through so uh, but if you've always listened are, to this show and thought, revolving. god i wish i could be in the same room as those people while they're speaking those words then at last and both of you your are welcome. nightmarish vision is coming true <laughs> we will let you know more when we settle on a date and there will be other stuff as well we're not going to promise anything but there's going to be some clever stuff going on as well violet's here violet do you think doing this live party thing is a good idea or a bad idea Idea. There you go, diplomatic, my genius <laughs> girlfriend. You've been listening to the genius that was Violet Berlin. Goodbye. The sensible side of Zog. Goodbye. And the frankly cliched Richard Porter. So that's you're a sideways glass <laughs> in the world of motoring. Oh, that's, that's all we've got time for now. Well, you should have started the program <laughs> earlier then, shouldn't you? Uh-huh. And I was Gareth. See ya. To send us an email, see pictures, get song lyrics, join our Facebook fan site, follow us on Twitter, or to find out about sponsorship opportunities, go to garethjones.tv. Gareth Jones on Speed is made in London by Whizbang. Gareth Jones on Speed!